welcome back. So if you've just found this video and you've not watched the first video, which is here, bing, watch that first and you'll be able to take this into context. So what I wanted to do is, I, I just want to use some real music. I really did because um, I, as much as the YouTube audio library is great, let's be honest, the music on it just sounds like the kind of stuff you'd find on a on an advert or an Apple advert. It's just not real music and there's never singing in it and sometimes you just want to use some real music to demonstrate stuff. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. So I'm going to use this. It's uh, Go West's first album and as far as I can tell this is an 80s pressing. I don't know if it's the very first one. It's dated 1985 but I've, I've chosen a song Call Me on this because I think it's a wonderful song. I think their stuff is so well produced and Call Me has always struck me as such a stereo song. So well produced, stuff bouncing left and right. It's, uh, I mean, it's a great track. So I've checked it as well. It's not Brick Wall Limited. That's important. This isn't a Brick Wall Limited track. It's got room to breathe, which is as they should be. So that's why I've decided to do this. And what I've done is I've uh, played this on my Marant CD, I think it's 6 to below 7 is it? But it's my modern Marant CD player that I'm very happy with and I've recorded it onto this 1986 Sony HF90 which is my favourite basic ferric cassette and I've used my ZX9 to record it peaking at plus 3 NAC scale. And what we're going to do now is we're going to listen to uh, a few things. We're going to listen to the original CD track we're going to listen to this being played into my Sony PCM recorder from the headphone socket of this tape. And then I'm also going to play this tape and record it onto the micro SD card through the actual system itself and see what it sounds like. So yeah, that's what we're going to do. So let's go away and do it. Okay, we have three tracks here. This first one at the top is a rip of the CD. This one here is the Panda playing the ZX9 recorded Sony HF and it's been recorded from its headphone output into the Sony PCM recorder and this bottom one is the same ZX9 recorded Sony HF but this time it's been recorded to the micro SD card in the Panda internally so this is its own recording. Now before we start the first thing that I want to point out is that this recording here I've had to reduce in volume because I don't know if you can tell, I mean if you look at the other two you can see there's peaks and troughs here. Uh, the original 85 CD I've got obviously wasn't brick wall limited and that's one of the reasons why it sounds so good and why I like that CD so much. But this, this was brick walled, this filled it all. The internal control so to speak or setting to the panda means it records it as loud as possible and as the instruction manual said the volume control has no effect on this so it was brick walled this all the way through very loud so I've reduced it to a similar sort of level so all I'm going to do now is I'm going to play these tracks I'm going to solo one by one and you can compare and contrast here we go
So I like that play till the end because I wanted you just to notice how little motor noise there was, which is a real improvement. So listening to it, okay, right. The, the original, like I say, it's the original CD, it's the 85 version, it's not Brit Wall Limited, and like I've said, it's one of the most stereo, well-produced, beautiful songs that I know. I love that song so much. In fact, the whole album's wonderful. Love Go West. So it sounds great. Now, this is the thing about comparisons. You see, on its own, you know, just, just listening to it in a cassette, you know, sorry, just listening to the Walkman itself to a set of headphones and not comparing it to the CD, I thought that's really decent. I honestly thought that's really decent. It's a nice, buzz-free, yes, it's hissy because there's no NR, but I thought that was a decent enough playback. Good playback, satisfying playback. It didn't piss my ears off. The only thing is, if I was to leverage anything at it, is that the, the top end's a bit sharp. There's a bit too much treble. It needs to have the treble sort of toned down just a little bit. Now, this was the surprise because this is the internally recorded one and this is now a 160k bps mp3 and yes it was brick wall limited but not only is it very clear and very musical but it, it seems to have added a bit of bottom end to it because i guess amplifying it up and then me turning it down it's sort of emphasized stuff a bit like you know the old bass boost switch which you used to get on some warmans it seems to have had that effect on it but as a way from transferring from a cassette internally to an MP3, I think that's remarkably good. I really genuinely do. I didn't expect it to be anything like this because I've done this on other recorders and it just didn't sound as good. This sounded really well. But let's not leave it here. I've got something else I want to try and I'll explain it to you now. So I gave my thoughts there, but let's, uh, let's, as Elzar would say in Futurama, let's take this up a notch. Bam! Right, we're going to compare it now. Because the point is, is this progress? Is this progress? Because it sounded pretty good. Is it progress though? So I'm going to compare it to two other Walkmans. One is this. Now, this thing here, I bought it and it put me off modern cassette decks because even though this is auto reverse, even though it has a good stereo auto reverse head, it's got two capstans in it because obviously it's, it's auto reverse, it's not going to flip. The problem with it is massive electrical hum interference from the motor that completely ruins it for me. Uh, it's very quiet as well and it doesn't record well to the USB stick. So let's compare it and see if this is progress from this. And then to round it off, we're also going to um, get a recording from this Panasonic RQP40 which is a very basic Panasonic from the late 90s, I imagine, on that one. But it's very basic, very cheap, about the, the most basic Walkman they made. And let's see if the Panda gets anywhere near the standard of this playback. So, yeah, that's what we're going to do. So let's go away and have a listen. OK, so what have we got? We've got the original CD rip again. All three of the cassette decks are using the same ZX9 recorded HF90. All of them were recorded into the Sony PCM recorder. So we've got the Panda here, which is taken from the headphone socket. We've got the Panasonic and we've got the crappy USB capture one. Just before I begin though, I do want to point out, if you look at the Panasonic, it's brick walled. I don't know what they've done with the internal circuitry or the internal amplification, but it outputs brick walled. Maybe that's the 90s thing from when it probably came from, but it's brick walled. If you look at the Panda, it goes up and down peaks and troughs, like with the original, even like with the crappy one. But the Panasonic is brick walled. But anyhow, let's have a listen and see what they sound like.
I let that play on a bit so you could hear the horrible electric buzz from the crappy one. So, having a listen there, what are my thoughts? Well, clearly the Panasonic is the best. The Panasonic has the nicest sound. Yes, it's brick walled, but it has the nicest sound. And I think that the, the Panda still, it, it quits itself well, but it, it doesn't sound as good as a 90s Panasonic, even a bottom of the range 90s Panasonic, it really doesn't. But I think, it, how can I put this? Well, let, let's leave this here and let's go back to them and, and do a wrap up. So here's the thing, right? This is definitely progress over this, undoubtedly. However, this one is, it annoys me because it's such a missed opportunity. If only they could do it right, because this has got a really good stereo auto reverse head. It's a dual capstan, yeah, it has to be because it's auto reverse, but it's auto reverse, it's stereo, the head's good, the speed's good. Even the design's quite neat, but that bleeding noise from the motor that just permeates everything makes this useless to me. And it's so close, like most Chinese made goods, it's so close, but there's just little things that ruin it for me. The Panasonic is, well, it's Panasonic. They're a great brand, they're still a great brand. They make great stuff and even this feels light as a feather it's got next to no features on it but sonically this is the best of the bunch it really is something to do with the audio circuitry it's not just about the mech it's not just about the head but it's also about the audio circuitry behind it and that's what some people forget when they talk about cassette decks they look at the uh, I won't flutter, they look at the signal to noise ratio, they look at the signal itself, what it can go up to, and whether it's direct drive, what the heads are, and say, yeah, bang, this deck's better than that. But that takes out of the equation all of the circuitry behind it. Like with my Arcam Delta 100 cassette deck. Yes, the mech comes out of a Denon DRM800A, but that's all. The rest of the circuitry, all the multitude of Dolby boards and everything in it is all Arcam and that makes a difference to the sound. So like I say, this sounds good. So what about the, the main crux of this video, the Panda? Is it progress? Yes. Over this, it's kind of progress. The MP3 recording's good. The playback doesn't have all of the distortion and noise from the motor. But on the other hand, this has its heads wired up incorrectly and this doesn't have auto reverse. But then again, neither does the Panasonic. But to take things into perspective, if this, if it's so close, if they could just wire the head up properly and then maybe just like in the old days, instead of it being a speaker here, we had a little graphic equaliser where we could adjust the bass, middle and treble you could get this to sound pretty good. My thoughts on this is that it's just a bit too sharp. There's just a bit too much treble. If they could tone that treble down, it would be a fuller sound, but there's no motor noise. It's got good stereo separation, even though it's the wrong way around. It records well to the TF card. It will play MP3s from that card. Um, and it's relative in price to the absolute bottom basic Alba from the 80s. And that's the thing, compared to that, is this any worse? No, I don't think it is any worse than a basic 80s Walkman, but we still have a way to go. They've still got to check the quality control on these. And like I say, the sound, if they can do something with the sound circuit, just do a bit of shaping, listen to it properly, or even give us the old graphic, e uh, graph the, the old graphic equaliser on the front, this could be a great player. I mean, as it is, if you literally just want something to play your cassettes on, on the move, or in your bedroom, if you're, and, and, and I'm not 
making these videos for you old timers like me that have got a Sony WMDC6 tapped away you don't need to put in the comments I'll stick to me WMDC6 thank you yes you stick to your 600 pound vintage Walkman it is going to be miles better than this if you've got it enjoy it but not everyone does and not everyone has a means to go out and buy something that expensive to play some cassettes they bought off Bandcamp or they found in a charity shop out of curiosity for 30 quid in your hand uh, I don't think that you can go far wrong with this maybe you'll get one with the head wired the right way around but even if you don't you still can't really tell all that much when you're listening to it unless you definitely have something which is going from ear to ear ping-ponging but for something also to convert your cassettes to mp3 easy if you're not that bothered about mega quality and investing in the debt this will do the job and it seemed to do the job well I was really impressed with how this did the mp3 encoding yes it was brick walled yes it was louder than it should be but it also seemed to add some bottom end to it which sounded better than the actual cassette playing itself so it is progress over this but we're still far and away from getting something of this quality for that sort of price and feeling the weight of this it shouldn't be too hard so you make your own decision but the conclusion I've got for this is this is program over this program progress over this and if I'd bought this back in the 80s with the heads wired the right way around I'd have been happy enough for like the you know the 13 quid it probably would have cost back in them days especially with the rechargeable battery pack in it and the speaker yeah it wouldn't have had the mp3 player back but it's decent enough and it's like everything if you want to compare to the source all the time you will find problems and you will find what's inferior but just putting a cassette in this playing it by itself my thoughts are it's got a little bit too much treble but other than that i'm happy enough so there we go thanks for watching hope you enjoyed the video and since this part was you know done with copyrighted music so i can't do any monetization on it go and watch one of my old videos again just to make up for it to get me the uh, the little revenue that i get from this channel cheers all right all the best take care happy taping bye bye